your thoughts might be turning to holidays and you might be thinking, oh, wouldn't it be lovely to start a travel journal? And you think, uh, where on earth do I start? Or even worse, you think, yeah, I'll start. And you put things in your bag and you come home and you haven't even got them out of your suitcase. So I thought I would share with you some tips about starting a travel sketch or travel journal. And the first thing is, what sort of travel journal do you want? Now, for example, do you want a coffee book? A co <laughs> or even better, a coffee table book. So I have this lovely book that was given to me many decades ago. Uh, it's by guy called Paul Osborne and he traveled from Athens through to Tibet. Well that's pretty impressive but it, it's full of his watercolor sketches and, and stories of his travels and, and so forth. These are all fully developed paintings. They are very sketchy but they, they are absolutely finished paintings. You know, is this what you aspire to? Do you want to have a book that will just lay on the coffee table and people will flip through and tell you how wonderful you are or do you want a book that is sort of a, a I don't know mix and match um, planning for future paintings capturing oh gosh this got taken by my my kids um, you know uh, take you know just more sketches that will be developed later or you might want more more of a journal so that it's got some writing, some thoughts, some pictures, some a bit more finish, some a bit more sketchy. Maybe that's what you're after. And I think it's really worth deciding before you go what your aim is, because that'll really help you decide what to take. Oh, where were we? We were in Crete, which are the sort of things I quite like to do when I'm on holiday, um, just to capture where we are and different impressions uh, and so forth you know that's what i like in terms of books this is just drawing paper and you can see for example oh, this is in france uh you can see i've left pages between because especially where i put color on them it shows through the paper and i personally don't like working on, on the backs where I can see through. That's the downside of just having even good quality drawing paper. Maybe you need to do that. Whereas this journal, which is from our most recent holiday, um, you may have seen it and I've done a full flip through of this journal. It's got watercolour paper in it. You know, it's a really lovely quality and, and that was considerably posher than, than this. You might go for a little journal like this so it's a little moleskin again I mean this has got very creamy colour paper in and it's not watercolour paper but it's substantial enough to be able to take a bit of a wash and I have worked on on every page because it didn't show through enough for, to annoy me so think about whether you want drawing paper or you want watercolour paper the next thing to think about is, is size and I have to say uh, the A5 size like that, about that size is great because it will just go in a bag, it'll go virtually in a pocket, uh, anything bigger even going up to this sort of size which is it just sort of squared off starts to be a bit cumbersome to, to carry. Five size but do you want a book that will lay pretty flat, so a sewn notebook. Do you want something spiral bound? The problem with spiral bound, if you want to work across two pages, is you've got the spiral binding there, a lot harder. Good thing is that you can open it up and work flat. I would always recommend having a hardback book because then you've got something to rest on. I personally wouldn't recommend that. In fact, I've got one here I can show you uh, the, the problem. I mean, this is just a craft paper. It's a little scrapbook, which would be great if you want to stick in tickets and bits from, from your holiday. But here I did a little skyline across two pages 
and you know there's a spiral getting in the way. What you might consider is a concertina sketchbook. So a concertina sketchbook opens out and this can be lovely for telling the story of say a week's holiday or a day's holiday whatever um, and carrying on the story. So that could be nice. You can work on one page, two pages or, or even three pages. This is a homemade one and I've got a YouTube film about making it. It's very straightforward but you can get commercial ones. This is from Sea White. comes in a nice little box which will protect it when it's being thrown around and here you can see that I've worked across three pages which is great. There it's two pages, two pages. It's quite rare that I'll only do one page to be honest. Oh look one and a tiny bit page. Um, so that's there. You can work from the back forwards should you should you want um you know i really like them and this one is interesting you know i said about oh the paper's really annoying you can see through it it's actually double paper but it's stuck together so you don't see the previous drawing or painting do this little scrapbook so you might want to consider a colored paper but then you would need to take something to give highlights and white rather than just rely on the white of the paper. So, so my recommendation would be a hardback book, A5, watercolour or drawing paper really doesn't particularly matter. I love something with a closure, just keeps things together. And quite a few little pocket books like this have a very handy pocket in the back so that's great for stuff you collect en route to to keep it in if you're not sort of going planning to stick it into your book look for something with a quite a robust binding because especially if you're traveling for a, a while quite a few books just end up falling to pieces and you have to stick them together so next what materials would you take well there's something to think about here unless you're planning and you're actually going on a painting holiday that's entirely different but if you're doing travel sketches whilst you're on holiday with friends and family probably going to have quite limited amounts of time you don't want to try their patience <laughs> and you're probably off doing other things as well you might only have a half hour sketch so i think that pen and wash is the way to go so ink and watercolor because it's incredibly quick to sketch and if I just come back to this one, all the sketches in here was certainly half hour or less. They're just quick sketches caught in pen and wash at opportune moments. I spent six weeks and I was very lucky going to Hawaii, Australia and then Thailand. And this is exactly the kit I took with me. A little bag to keep everything together. A small set of watercolours. This is actually a Derwent one, but as long as it's got few of your favourite colours in, really doesn't matter who it is. This is a little travel kit that I've made myself, and it's actually got, what, 25 colours in, but what I've used is one of these. It's a mini ice cube tray, and I've got a whole film on how to make a little kit like this, so it's super neat. You can get very small commercial sets as well something like this this is from Sennelier and only you know eight colors and a tiny brush but you know that will fit in a pocket or in a bag and then for pen and wash you want a waterproof pen these fine liners they're, they're very cheap they are just dis disposable you might want them in a few different widths so that's a point one a point two point three and a 0.8 black those ones whereas these ones are sepia so I happen to have the sepia if I hadn't had them I wouldn't have bothered and then I do like these um, they're 0.88 pens from Stabilo and again I've got a whole film about those so I'll put details in the description and they're great for sketching because you can put a line down a little bit of water over the top and it'll become a little inky wash so you can do the line and the wash 
just with the pen. I take water brushes with me because you just don't want to spill water or have to be somewhere where you've got to find water to fill up your pot or whatever. So if you don't know water brushes, basically the water goes in the handle. You just fill that up and the water will come out through the brush and you can use it. So I would recommend a water brush. I took two just in case I lost one. And I took multiples of pens simply in case they ran out and I was in the middle of the outback in Australia. A little spray bottle is a good thing to have either to use on your work or just to spray on your watercolours, particularly if you're in a really hot, dry place and everything's drying up. But that's what I took with me and those lasted me very well for six weeks. A couple of things to think about. Going through security at airports, you need to make sure this is emptied or declared because it's got liquid in it. You will get stopped and checked and they might take it away. Same with your water brushes. That amount of water will uh, be detected by the scanners. Just make sure that you've emptied that or put it in the bag that you declare. I definitely recommend pans rather than tubes because, again, liquid watercolour so in tubes if you've got it in your hand luggage you'll need to put uh, take it out and declare it if you put it in your actual luggage there's always a danger that at the the low pressure of the hold it will explode all over your holiday clothes so that is more portable it's lighter less likely to to explode everywhere but above all Keep it simple. When somewhere hot, I'd suggest taking a hat rather than sunglasses, or as well as sunglasses, because sunglasses alter your, your sense of tone. If you are sitting outside sketching, you may get caught up in your sketch. Always remember to put your suntan lotion on. You might be looking at that and thinking, oh, there's something missing. And that would be a pencil and an eraser. And I deliberately didn't take those with me because I reckoned I'd have half an hour to do a sketch and that's not enough time to draw a pencil drawing, rub it out because it's not perfect. I just go straight in with pen. It's far quicker and it is, I'd like to say, perfectly imperfect. I'm not aiming for that coffee table book. I'm aiming for sketches that capture the essence of where I am. So I would leave those at home. So one thing I wish I'd taken with me is a bulldog clip either really useful if you've especially if you've got a concertina sketchbook stops it falling apart or say i'm sketching away like this i'm balancing on my knee i could clip that to my book and paint like this so they are really useful and i didn't take with me one with me and I wish I had. So if that's my kit, that will fit very easily into a handbag or your day rucksack or, or whatever you're carrying around with you. And I would suggest it with you because you never know when you're going to have to wait for a coffee, wait for a bus, wait for a plane, whatever. And you can take your sketchbook out and really enjoy sketching. So if that's what I would take, where do we start? I would suggest starting before you leave home. The first page of a brand new sketchbook is often pretty intimidating. So sketching your art materials before you go breaks the back of the sketchbook. And it also tests out your art materials to make sure you haven't forgotten something. I think in my most recent one, yeah, look, I've just painted a few pens just to get going and it helps you get familiar with the paper and, you know, work out what you want to take and what you don't want to take. Always a good idea to either leave your email address or, yeah, phone number in your sketchbook in case you leave it somewhere. People are lovely and they will return things to you or you should be able to track it down. So having broken the back of your sketchbook and started, what sort of things might you sketch? To be honest, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's things that catch your eye. So 
this was a travel card this was the card that opened our hotel room that's how i started it this was the view off our balcony and then i got into the groove of things and actually started painting outside you might want to think about putting writing in i wanted to make this more of a diary and not just sketches and i don't have great handwriting but you can make it decorative here by placing it on the side here i just put bullet points and oh later on that's right with the pelican because i thought this was a very boring little sketch i just made the writing go round back in this one so this is in crete the view from our um terrace there was a lovely prickly pear so you know don't pick the prickly pear by the paw uh, line from from jungle book so you can write in little bits or here i was our hire car broke down and we were waiting for a new battery so i just made a couple of little comments while i sat and sketched waiting for the uh, the, the rescue service to come and sort us out. While you're sketching, be safety conscious. It, it's very easy. You're sitting sketching, say, this, uh, this square. And I was sitting on the steps, the cathedral's behind me, and sitting on the steps. It would be very easy to put things down on the ground beside you or your bag and someone to steal it. So do be aware of your surroundings. If possible, sit with your back against a wall. Or I usually have a bag, rather than a rucksack, I have a bag going across my body. So everything is to my side, but it's attached to me. And you know what I said about uh, making little notes? I've just read what, <laughs> what note I've written here. So it says, oh, this is back in 2019, and it says, beware of vomiting children. And I think I was sitting here, yes, and a child on the steps <laughs> threw up. So, you know, if I'd taken a photo, I wouldn't remember that. This isn't a brilliant sketch, but actually I read my little comment, I look at that, and I can remember the heat, and I can remember sitting in the square just enjoying what was going on. A sketch, however unfinished or imperfect, is going to bring back so many more memories than a photo. Some people can get a bit sniffy um, about you must do everything on location and you know it's all got to be finished there, there and then for it to be real and to count. Well, I don't think that's true at all. You know, these sketches were, were done on location holiday down in Sussex. But when I got back, I realised I hadn't actually drawn post houses, which are so part of that countryside. And we had a lovely photo. So I did just a quick little sketch of post houses. But that was when I was home from a photo, but while it was still really fresh in my, my memory. So my view is this is your book. It's your holiday, so it's your rules, and you do what makes you happy. If you want to sketch from photos in the evening when you're sitting back at your hotel, fabulous. If you want to do it in person, brilliant. And if you want to make this more of a journal, and in this case, I've just put things like tickets and ephemera in the back, but if you want to make that part of the journal, that's fantastic too, in which case I would take a little glue stick with you and maybe a pair of scissors and add that into your sketching kit. Glue stick should be fine going through security. Scissors, of course, will need to be in your checked in luggage so that you're not stopped. Um, can't take your scissors in your hand luggage. My final tip is I would take your sketching kit in your hand luggage rather than your checked in luggage apart from as i say if you've got a pair of scissors because one i would be so upset if i lost my sketchbook frankly if they lose my clothes well that's why i've got holiday insurance but um if they lose my sketchbook i would be upset and secondly if you've got a long wait you can sit and sketch and while away the time very happily so just about every travel journal I've ever seen seems to have an aeroplane waiting kind of 
I hope some of those tips have been helpful. Keep it simple. Just do it. Take it with you wherever you go. And even years afterwards, you will look at these sketchbooks. It will bring back the sights and smells and sounds of your holiday, of your travels, so much more than all those photos that you've clicked on your phone and then never look at.